What's up, 4th and 9? Happy Saturday. I know most of you guys were probably looking forward to round three of the NFL draft, or day three of the NFL draft rounds four through seven, except we got hit with some crazy news this morning. Uh, when I woke up, most of us got hit with the notification that uh, Redskins left tackle Trent Williams has been traded to the 49ers for a third round pick in 2021 and a fifth round pick, uh, pick number 156 from today. Uh, so Trent Williams coming to the 49ers, uh, immediately most of us knew what that meant. Uh, it meant that Joe Staley was probably going to retire because they obviously played the same position. And immediately the news broke uh, that, you know, 35-year-old Joe Staley, uh, who'd been dealing with some injuries and uh, in, in the offseason, uh, will not be returning. He will be retiring. Uh, so I have on with me here today uh, David. So, David, give me your quick reaction to this news. Gosh, you know, it, it's hard to have uh, anything other but a really emotional reaction to this immediately. Um, there, there is a football aspect to this that we got to kind of, you know, be fair about. But, man, it's Joe Staley we're talking about. You know, one of the all-time great and most loved Niners. I mean, both as a player and a guy off the field. This is a guy whose attitude and presence has permeated the locker room, the fan base. It's just a – you know, it, it's it's tough to be happy about getting an elite left tackle like Trent Williams at the cost of Joe Staley's retirement. Um, you know, my initial thoughts are that this is something obviously that was you know weighing on him and the and the franchise for a while. Like when when the Mayo, when we talked about this earlier, you know, when Mayoko first said that you know this was possible, I didn't believe it at all. But then you really got to take into context the environment of where we're at right now as a country in terms of like how we reprioritize things, how our lives have changed, how much we're um, knocked out of our regular routine. Like think about us as normal humans. None of us are going to the gym as much anymore. How hard is it for a guy like Joe Staley after all these injuries to be in his normal training conditioning to get ready for a season that's full of nothing but unknowns in terms of schedule, training camp? And I just think that probably set him over the edge. And um, – you know, I just – a combination of age, right time to retire, and COVID tipping the scales. I, I really think that's it. Yeah, and uh, when he spoke after the Super Bowl, after the 49ers uh, lost, uh, that was probably the most emotional I've ever seen Joe Staley. Um, he spoke probably in depth about um, just kind of how tough this run has been. Uh, he has been with the 49ers for 13 years now. They've had some – high highs and some low lows during that period and just makes you wonder if if that toll um you know just weighed uh so much on Staley. Here, here's the exact quote i was pulling it up uh, i just don't know how hard it is to get here and you don't know how many chances you're going to get again to be in this moment so this hurts it hurts that's a cl cliche to say that but it's seriously the only reason i play football uh, i don't give a shit about any of that other stuff I don't care about being paid well I don't care about going to Pro Bowls I don't care about anything I just want to win a Super Bowl I just want to know what it feels like to win a Super Bowl trophy and there was a moment in the fourth quarter when we had a 2010 lead and there was about eight minutes left and I thought I was going to get that so alas yeah. first you can hear you re-say that quote again I remember that quote but it's just like now that quote it hurt then and it hurts more now to hear it yeah. and you know I think that's also where you know, we got to kind of keep our objectivity here of this as a football move and look and look at what we're getting here. You know, we're getting an elite left tackle um, guy who is both dominant in both the run game and the pass game. 32 years old, but his 2018 season was absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we also, you know, cap management, you know, Staley's retirement. I think he was getting like four, close to 15 million uh, this upcoming season. Trent's getting, I think, 12 and a half is what I saw. And they're going to obviously come up and restructure something real quick, but um, football wise, you know, this is, this is a good thing getting Trent Williams and also for next year's draft, like next year's draft is supposed to be a very tackle heavy draft. Um, but now the Niners can address other needs that they didn't address early in this draft with like cornerback interior O line. So, you know, the, uh, kudos to John Lynch making the best of this situation, which just we're losing one of our leaders, one of our most loved players, with a good replacement strategy, but man, it's real hard to, to, to be happy about that right now. I think we just all really love Staley as a player and as a man. Yeah. So some, some logistical things, right. Just like you mentioned. So Joe Staley was under contract. Uh, uh, for, it was actually 11 and a half million dollar cap hit. So that comes off the books. 
uh, when he retires. So uh, just like you mentioned, Trent hit, Trent Williams was on uh, the books for twelve and a half million this season. So um, I think the 49ers will restructure that deal probably um, when Julie Donaldson, the NBC uh, sports Washington reporter spoke yesterday. She mentioned that ideally Williams would like an extension that would make him, you know, either the highest or the second highest pay tackle. So that would put him about, you know, 22 million a year, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, but it looks like the 49ers aren't going to do that immediately. Um, it looked like they were going to kind of wait it out and see um, what to do with that deal. So uh, the news does make sense. Trent Williams turned down a potential trade to Minnesota where an extension would have been guaranteed. Um, and instead he chose to come and reunite with Kyle Shanahan, who was the OC when he got drafted in Washington uh, and fit in this offense. Uh, the starting offensive line next year, uh, you've got Trent Williams on the right, on the left side, Lagan Tomlinson, w- Weston Richburg, if he comes back healthy from the knee injury, either Tom Compton or Daniel Brunskill, and then Mike Lynch. It's, it's a very solid uh, line. I think, Arguably, they've upgraded if Trent Williams plays at his 2018 level. Uh, it, it is an upgrade. I mean, it, it's most likely an upgrade. I'll say this. I want to hit on one thing real quick. When this talk about Trent Williams to the Niners started, I, again, dismissed it for one reason you just kind of alluded to, the Washington relationship with the Shanahan's. I didn't think there was any way in hell they would play ball with us. But Trent Williams saying no to Minnesota – and this whole leverage game he played the last year, you know, Snyder probably just gave up today. Let's move on. Let's get this over with. For us to get him for a fifth this year and a third pick next year, when we already have a comp pick in the bag for Sanders and can maneuver to make up that pick later on, this is, this is a huge win. It, it, it's a sad win, but it is a huge win. Yeah, a couple things on the, the you know, uh, Dan Snyder thing. I think because they hired Ron R- Rivera – looks like Rivera is kind of the adult in the room now. And he yeah. probably told Dan Snyder, Hey, we're not going to get anything from Trent Williams. Here's going to kind of suck it up. It's all right. If Williams goes to, uh, you know, back to Kyle Shanahan, we'll figure out our tackle situation. Let's just get this situation kind of off our hands and let's move on. So Rivera being hired by the, four, by the Redskins helping out the 49ers in this case, but Joe Staley's career in San Francisco, uh, 13 years, six time pro bowler, uh, three-time, you know, second-team All-Pro, All-Rookie team, 2010's All-Decade team, two NFC titles, uh, just one of the most consistent players that I've seen probably in my lifetime for San Francisco, especially when they went through uh, three or four regimes there. Uh, he stuck by it all, so much respect to Joe Staley. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's also in a way it's an end of an era and a total handoff now to the, the Lynch era because, like, you know, let's not forget that incredible draft, you know, where uh, he also came to the Patrick Willis draft. And, um, you know, when Staley came to us, he was originally a tight end who had just shifted to offensive line, started off as right tackle. And, right. man, this is just all-time great love Niner. So it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like the final goodbye to that, uh, you know, late O's team. And it just – it sucks. But – Kudos to Lynch and not being emotional like the rest of us about this and making the most of it. Yeah, and and I would say, you know, uh, when the 49ers got hit with those retirements in 2014 with Patrick Willis, Chris Borland, uh, Trent Baalke in that front office had no plan to replace those players. Immediately after those retirements, the team got worse. Uh, Joe Staley, I think, gave the 49ers a huge parting retirement gift. He held out his retirement announcement uh, through this entire process. They likely were able to sell Tampa Bay on the fact that, hey, you know, Joe Staley is going to retire. We're going to take Tristan Wirfs, get that fourth round pick from them for moving back. They used that for Brandon Ayuk. Uh, they probably leveraged the Redskins, uh, you know, in the opposite manner, saying, hey, I think Joe Staley may come back, but, you know, you, you might want to give us something, you know, you might want to give us Trent Williams for a discount. And so Joe Staley waiting to announce his retirement was a huge deal for the 49ers. It allowed John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan to kind of work in the background and make all these moves. And now they've arguably upgraded at that position. So great stuff from the 49ers front office. Uh, Any last thoughts, David? No, I mean, I'm obviously now I'm really interested to see how they're going to deal with the cap, you know, obviously kind of hoping, you know, just to shift it back to the rest of today, seeing if they get rid of any guys for any later picks, you know, it was a bummer to see some of the tight ends go off the board that we were talking about. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to watch how the rest of the draft, the UDFA goes, but obviously Staley is going to be top of mind for us today. So, um, 
you know, just a fond farewell to one of my all-time favorite Niners. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for the job. And, you know, thanks for that last dance you did with us in the front office enabling a succession plan. I mean, it's just, like you said, this never would have happened during the Baltimore era. Do not have plans like this. Lynch does. Yeah, and uh, they just officially announced the trade. The 49ers did about, you know, just as we hopped on this. So it is official. Uh, 49ers PR department just sent, sent over an email. So it is happening. Um, the 49ers still have two picks left today. They have picked 210 and 217 in the sixth and seventh rounds. So they will be adding talent, but those are afterthoughts with everything that's going on with Joe Staley and Trent Williams. So once again, follow us over at fourth and nine on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, head over to the website. We'll have content coming uh, about Joe Staley, Trent Williams, his draft class and everything that's going on. So thanks to David for hopping on really quickly as we can give our quick reaction on these, on this news. Thanks.